Welcome to the Swike Podcast, the only podcast that shares the stuff you didn't know you needed to know about jobs, careers, and life. The Swike Podcast, the stuff I wish I knew earlier. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Swike Stuff I Wish I Knew Earlier podcast. For today's podcast, we're continuing our series for recent grads. And I mentioned before that I typically put them in three camps. One is you have a job in your area of interest. Two, you have a job, but not in your area of interest. And the third one is you don't have a job, right? So I'll pick the second one um, now as we think about job in not your area of interest. And if uh, you want to take a look at some of the other ones, then please feel free to do so. So you got uh, your, your graduation, you got a job, but not necessarily in your area of interest. So usually it's, it's one of two camps on this side is either you have found uh, your, your purpose or you thought you had your purpose and then you realize, well, it's not exactly what I wanted to do. I had this idea in my head that this is going to be great and phenomenal, but this isn't exactly the type of work that I want to be doing, right? So from there, you're probably in, in a pretty good spot, right? In, in the sense where at least in your area, you were able to kind of achieve most of the things, but your expectations were just a little bit misaligned in, in there, right? So there, there's a couple of things that you can do in, in that stage. Is one is you can consider kind of job crafting, right? And this is a fairly new uh, invention, I guess, uh, in regards to making your surrounding, making your environment uh, suited to what you want to be doing, right? So instead of going out and finding a new job, thinking about your current job and finding what areas of it can I improve and get more of and then minimize the other stuff. So a good thing to incorporate uh, into your day as you're uh, doing something like this is what I call the, the 5 two, two, one journaling method, right? And it's basically five minutes a day. Go grab a journal, go grab a Google Doc, whatever you have to, although it's better if you write it down. Five minutes on um, the first two minutes, writing down what did you do today that drained you, right? So that work that you did that wasn't exactly aligned with what you want to do, what did you do? And be as specific as possible. That's why you want to spend two minutes not just writing one line, who are you with? What were you doing? Uh, what time of day? What 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 uh, how, your energy level or whatever it is? Try to be as specific as possible. Then the next two minutes, uh, writing down times when you were energized today, right? When you felt, oh my gosh, this is great. If you ever heard of the the state of being in flow, right? If you ever lost track of time or like, oh my gosh, this thing is amazing. When did you do that? Again, as specifically as possible. What were you doing? Who are you with? The context, the content, and all that sort of stuff, right? And then the last minute, thinking about how can you minimize the first and maximize the second, right? And ideally, as you start maximizing the second, then your job, which you weren't really interested in, becomes a little bit more interesting because you had a 100% and 80% wasn't interesting and 20% was. And then it's not 20%, it's now 30%, 40%, 50%, right? And there are limits within uh, jobs and companies and roles. So you might not be able to make it 100%, but at least in the circumstance that you're in, you can maximize whatever potential. And then ideally, what you want to do is over the course of weeks and months, figure out what is that area of interest? So are you dealing with people, with number, with analytics, you're creative, you're uh, coming up with new ideas, you're uh, synthesizing, you're improving, you're whatever it is, and, and thinking about what areas do you want to get into? And as you start figuring out those areas, then connect with people, right? Who has the job that you want, right? Who is doing interesting things? Expanding your, your network and, and uh, taking a look at alumni who are, who are doing different things than you would have thought, right? You might have encountered them in your job search already, but reconnect and say, hey, I, I know we talked uh, just before I graduated or, or recently, and I'd love to learn a little bit more about this, right? And, and see if you can uh, find what of their uh, work really excites you and something that is really interesting for you. So the, the goal is to not just run away from the stuff that you're doing right now. The goal is to find something that you want to run towards and are drawn uh, from. Because if you're running away from the stuff that, that you don't want to be doing, it's like, well, I know I don't want to be doing this. If you go to another place, you might be in the same pile just doing uh, di different things, right? So you, you don't want to be in that situation. You want to have a good sense of what you want to go to, uh, unless that the work that you're doing is 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 re really bad and you're in like a toxic environment or whatever. That's a slightly different condition. But on the assumption that you're in okay shape, all right, and and you have room room to grow, go find that thing that you really really want. Um, for those of you who follow m my work, my approach is really a what, why, and then how, right? So what we're trying to do is figure out what do you want, right? So you don't have that purpose, that direction of what you really want to be doing. 
well, what do you want to be doing? <laughs> and can you truly find what that is, right? And then going back to the, the, the why, right? To say, okay, what is it about this that, that I enjoy, right? Is there a, a deeper meaning? And if you can uh, explore the, the areas to say, like, what do I kind of thoroughly love? What is it that I just like and, and enjoy, right? So for the, those of you who are uh, finding your, your area of, of purpose, that's uh, something that I definitely recommend folks to do. Allocate some non-negotiable time, right? So a little bit on the on the reflection and on the journaling and on the writing, right? That five, two, two, one, but also on uh, being able to explore. So allocating an hour a day, right? After work, before work, or whenever you, you uh, are able to, on the weekends, if, if that's all you have, then spending an hour saying, okay, who can I connect with? Who can I do a Zoom coffee chat, lunch with someone in order to learn a little bit more, right? And then once you find these areas where you enjoy, pick one to explore, right? And if you have too many, there are 20, a whole bunch of different areas that you want to explore, then I encourage you to, to use a concept that I call the, the flavor of the month. So let's say you have 10 different things that you want to explore, right? You can do all of them, just not at the same time, right? So what you want to do is pick one, right? Which one? Doesn't really matter, right? You can say, okay, if I had to pick any one of them, this is the one that I would start with. Because again, you're doing all of them. You're just picking one to start. And then the flavor of the month is for the next month, do everything uh, in your non-negotiable time and your extra time to help you advance yourself towards that until it gets to its logical conclusion, right? So you might be taking courses, you might be talking to people, you might be doing personal projects, volunteering or whatever it is to kind of explore more. And then the more, the more that you do it, then you might find, wow, this is amazing. I want to keep going. And the next month's flavor might be the same thing, right? Whatever it is, just, just keep on going and growing and, and, and uh, getting better and better and better. Or you might find that uh, within a week or two, you're like, hmm, this is not really what I thought it was at all. Right. So in that case, then you can shorten that period. But ideally, you want to give yourself uh, that month. Right. Because uh, you, you want to keep persisting and say, OK, exploring and say, you know what, give it a shot. Give it another three weeks to see if it, there's something because it might not be that thing. It might be the people that you connected with. It might be the specific things that you did. And in order to avoid uh, you kind of missing the boat because you didn't explore it thoroughly. Well, that's why you kind of give yourself that time box. Right. And then your, your flavor of the month might ex expand to a quarter, a year, or whatever. And then hopefully that goes into kind of a purpose and passion. Because I find that most people, they, they, they aren't just automatically born with a, a passion or a purpose. They don't automatically find this thing. It, it usually is a slow burn and incubate, right? Where you start off with a curiosity, then you go into an interest as you spend more time. It's like, wow, this is really kind of cool and interesting. And then you get excited about it and you want to do more and more and more. And then after that point, after you spent some time, and for each person that amount of time is different, then it ignites into a, like a, a passion and maybe a purpose as, as well, right? But it usually takes some time to really in, invest in and grow and, and get better. And for some of you, you might actually find that it doesn't really matter. You can really find the goodness or the uh, interesting things about anything that you do. And when that's a possibility for you, then that's where a big win happens, right? So from, from there, you, you g grab your purpose and, and you continue, you develop. That might be months in the making, years in the making, decades in the making. Uh, but if you never even find that purpose, uh, imagine living a life where all you're doing is things that you're interested in, curious about, and excited about. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a bad life anyway, right? So it, you might not find that this one thing, but it's, it, it's that quote, it's about the journey, not the destination. So first of all, making sure that you take the time, explore, leverage connections and network, and then actually do taste. Because oftentimes people want to do this kind of like th theoretical exercise. They want to take an assessment and, and know that their purpose is. But, but I treat it kind of like going to a buffet, right? And, and you have all these entrees, all these dishes that you could sample. And they all look good. They all look tasty. But will they actually be tasty? Well, you won't know until you actually go and try right? So someone else can say, yeah, yeah, definitely eat this. This is amazing. But they might have a different palate from you. They, they, they might have a different taste profile and, and a flavor profile from you. And what they love is not exactly what you like. So go out and try, right? Go and experiment. And for those of you who think that you are wasting time, well, you're not, right? You have so much time. There's a lot of things that, that you could be doing. Um, and you're only wasting time if you don't learn anything from it. So at the very least, you learn on what you don't want to do, and hopefully you can reflect back on the, your time, again, using that 5 2 one journaling or whatever method that you want, and saying, okay, what did I like about it? What didn't I, right? Because you had a thought in your head that you were going to like it, but you ended up not liking it. 
what changed, what was different, and, and how can you realign your expectations and, and grow. And the, the better that you can get at uh, kind of aligning those expectations and doing that critical thinking and all that sort of stuff, the better you will be in, in your life. Now for other uh, recent grads who are in the job situation, but it, it's more of, you know what, I didn't really find anything um, and I wasn't able to land the types of roles that I wanted. So that's the reason why you're not in your areas of interest. Well, treat that as a stepping stone. So go to that video about uh, the, the job search and basically do the same sort of things. You want to get more work experience. Now you're working right now. So can you take the work that you're doing right now and adapt it to the type of work that you want to be doing? And oftentimes, irrespective of the job, uh, there are common transferable skills that you can get and adapt to to future areas. So taking a look at uh, job descriptions that are out there and say, okay, can I do this or can I demonstrate this at my current job? And if, if you're going to be there anyway, if you're going to show up and, and you want to make some money, if you want to just, just pay the bills until you're figuring things out, you might as well do the things that will set you up for the next opportunity. So ideally what you want to do there is to pre-write your resume to say, okay, can I set some goals to write um, or, or to experience things, to get experience in things that uh, align with my future job prospects, right? So taking the time during your, your nine to five or whatever time you work in order to get that better work experience. And then obviously update your, your resume to do that, practice your interview questions and expand your, your network. Again, same sort of thing. You might have a little less time because if you're working like nine to five, you might have only be able to, to connect with people from five to 10 or 12 or whatever it is, right? Um, but if you can on, on weekends or, or maybe take a day off here and there to kind of help with the job search, go and take that time uh, to e explore and be open to opportunities, right? And sa same with the, the video on not being employed. Oftentimes it is a mindset thing, right? So taking a look and an understanding that it will take some time, right? You, you already got a job, so you know you're employable. Now the next step is to find the job that you want. So uh, like, like in the previous segment, uh, understanding what it is that you actually want. Because if you don't know what you want, then you're just jumping from, from pond to pond and experience the same stuff that you don't want to be doing. But when you clearly understand what you want, you can kind of navigate uh, appropriately. And uh, yeah, leverage the, the opportunity and be open to opportunities. And uh, whether you're, you're employed in the area that you want to be in or in a totally different area, you always want to be open to opportunities. Um, but the important thing when you are in that situation is allocating the time and surrounding yourself with, with people and resources that will elevate you and uplift you so that you can sustain that uh, until you do actually land the thing that, that you want, right? And if the next thing that you land is uh, not exactly what you want, well, hopefully it's closer, where the, the, the past role might have been a 3 out of 10, this next role is a 5 out of 10, and then the next role is a 7, and then and then an 8, 9, as, as you get closer, right? You may not be able to go from a 3 out of 10 to a 9 out of 10 right away, right? But understanding that oftentimes it's a, it's a process. So if you are a recent grad and you're in the camp where you have landed a job, but not necessarily one in your area of interest, uh, for, for the first part where it's more that it, uh, the expectations and interests were misaligned, Go out there and look for your purpose, right? Do that five, two, two, one journaling, allocate some non-negotiable time, leverage your, your network, and see how you can job craft your, your current role into something that is uh, more appealing to you. And for those that are kind of more in that stepping stone type of job that uh, really want to uh, get out there, again, spend that time to make the most out of your opportunity there. Because if you're going to be working, you might as well make the most out of it. And then continue to... to uh, apply, continue to network, continue to practice, continue to get more experience, and then just making sure that your mindset is able to kind of sustain you so that you can land that role and be open to opportunities. So thanks so much for joining me for this episode, and we'll see you again in a future episode. Thanks for joining us on the Swike Stuff I Wish I Knew Earlier, the podcast. If you like the podcast, please subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you found this podcast. And if you can give us a review, that would be very appreciated. Feel free to contact me on LinkedIn at Luki Danu, L-U-K-I-D-A-N-U, and the same on most social media platforms. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Bye.